All right. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to the live lower speeds class. This class focuses on the 60, 80, 100 speeds. And uh, I don't see anybody in here yet. So I'll go ahead and uh, get started and I'll mute everyone. And then at the end of class, I'll unmute if there's anyone in here to ask questions. All right, here we go. <clears throat> We're going to start off with some common words. I always like to start off with those because it gets our fingers going. Get a little bit of a warm up. Here we go, ready? Road, agent, character, third, country, standard, recall, result, miles, mailed, equipment, manager, tired, spent, various, advertising, examination, leaving, turned, follow, ladder, article, obliged, plant, lady, otherwise, particularly, sometime, envelope, property, door, using, handling, national, kept, covered, absolutely, front, ourselves, feet, common, bought, everybody, required, nature, places, sleep, minutes, surprised. All right, moving right into some common phrases that people say. And again, you want to phrase as much as possible. Okay, here we go. Which have, which have been, which have had, which he, which he believed, which he believes, which he feels, which he felt, which he had, which he is, which he knows, which he recalled, which he recalls, which he recollected, which he recollects, which he remembered, which he remembers, which he shall, which he should, which he understands, which he wanted, which he wants, which he was, which he will, which he would, which I am, which I believe, which I believed, which I could, which I feel, which I felt, <clears throat> which I had, which I have, which I have been, which I have had, which I recall, which I recalled, which I recollect, which I recollected, which I remember, which I remembered, which I say, which I shall, which I should, which I understand, which I want, which I wanted, which I was, which is, which shall. All right. I've got a paragraph that focuses on frequently used words. You're going to hear further, which is F-U-R-T, suppose, you can squeeze that, S-P long O-Z, suppose, new, seems, several, desire, really, fine, taken, paper, 
high y material rather <clears throat> listen past stock away life and here is your paragraph i will read this at 80 words a minute ready several years ago we purchased 100 shares of stock in Northeast Industries. At the time, we really knew very little about stock. We had taken the advice of a friend rather than listened to the advice of a stock broker. Our desire to make a quick profit seems to have overruled our good judgment. Why do you suppose we did that? Even though the past is history, life seems to repeat itself. We now stay away from high risk investments. Furthermore, we read the daily paper or internet and inquire about material pertaining to investments. Now today, we are doing just fine. All right, so I have a phrase review for you. I'm going to give you the phrases and then read the paragraph. You're going to hear, you shall, who is, we have, do you, have, or I'm sorry, had been, had been as an initial H, final B, may have, have you ever, initial V, final, or initial V, U, final effort, uh, there is, who is, could have, which is K-O-V, Cove would be written with the long O, if you. All right, here is your paragraph. And you're going to focus on phrasing. Ready? Have you ever gone to the beach and felt out of place? Do you want to trim down and shape up? We may have the answer for your fitness problems. We have available a free three-month membership in the All Pro Health Club. If you had been contemplating entering a fitness program, ours is for you. There is no one who is ever disappointed. Don't say to yourself three months from now, I could have had that new swimsuit, that new outfit, that trimmer new me. You shall be a new you if you don't delay. So start today. All right, I have a drill here that has uh, word families that end with T-H-E-R. We do have briefs for some of these, like mother, M-A-U-R, father, F-A-U-R, another A-O, final T, brother, you can either write that as B-R-A-U-R or B-R-O, bro would be a long O, Rather, R-A-U-R, gather, G-A-U-R, and then we've got leather, smother, smoother, together, T-O-G-T, -T, neither, and long E-R-T, either, long E-R-T. And here are your sentences. My mother is a doctor. My mother is 48 years old. My father 
is a dentist. My father lives in the suburbs. Do you have another pencil? Is there another vehicle available? Don't bother to call me. Did he bother to send the email? We are rather disappointed in his progress. Would you rather have iced tea? Please gather all your valuables. Do we have time to gather the whole group? The belt was made of leather. Amy purchased a leather handbag. You will smother with so many blankets on. The silk is smoother than the satin. Is her skin smoother than mine? Either of the flavors would be fine. Did they select either of your entries? Neither of the students finished the exam. The family enjoys being together on all the holidays and during summer vacations. All right, moving right into a number drill. This is going to emphasize dollar amounts. All right. I'm going to give you the dollar amounts before I read you the paragraph. Give you some practice with numbers. Here we go, ready? One million nine hundred sixty-five thousand two hundred twenty-five dollars twenty-eight cents. Five hundred seventy-six thousand seven hundred twenty-two dollars ten cents. Eight hundred ninety-five thousand three hundred six dollars fifty-eight cents. Two million one hundred forty-five thousand three hundred thirty-eight dollars sixty-seven cents. Seven hundred fifty thousand nine hundred. Twenty dollars four cents, two hundred fifty thousand eight hundred sixty five dollars seventy five cents. And here is your paragraph The home we would like to buy is located at one nine four. 32 Bay Road. The asking price is $494,750. We offered the seller $390,500 with a down payment of $175. Thousand dollars. There is a first mortgage on the house totaling two hundred sixty four thousand nine hundred fifteen dollars. There is also a second mortgage on the house totaling one hundred twenty five thousand six hundred. $60. Both these mortgages are assumable. The seller will carry a third with a 12% rate of interest. <clears throat> All right. 
Got some words here that end with mint. So final MT. Ready? Augment, claimant, foment, payment, lament, pavement, dement, shipment, statement, casement, basement, comment, element, abetment, argument, judgment, indictment, pigment, placement, armament, document, averment, elopement, detriment, demented, sediment, parchment, abutment, sentiment, abasement, abatement, affirmment, agreement, alignment, monument, inclement, torment, adornment, entrenchment, fulfillment, reclaimment, sustainment, supplement, accruement, firmament, adjustment, resentment, postponement, preferment, disbarment, amusement, annulment, apartment, enrollment, enjoyment, enrichment, prepayment, investment, installment, environment, abridgment, <clears throat> claimants, adjournment, advancement, deportment, entailment, enlargement, complement, confinement, disbursement, discernment, achievement, acquirement, allotment, allurement, embodiment, divestment. All right. There are more, but we're going to stop there and move on to literary and jury charge. All right. I'm going to start off with some closing arguments. Okay. You're going to hear ladies and gentlemen, which is L long A J, Lage. I don't know, Y O N. Um, evidence, E F D. Defendant, D E F T. Um, or you can just do D F T without the E. It's up to you. Character, K H A R K. Park, of course, is final FK. That's a great one. You're going to hear Mark Wilton. Reasonable doubt, initial R, final D. Security. Um, prostitution. Escort service, brothels, pimp, strengthening, presumption of innocence. All right, we're going to get started. I'm going to start 
at 60 and I will work my way all the way up to 100, okay? So I'll go from 60 to 80 to 100. Okay, here we go, ready? <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know about bells and buzzers and flip charts and so forth. Ladies and gentlemen, she didn't answer the last question I asked and I didn't write that down. I don't think she answered any of those questions. I can sympathize with Ms. Schultz in trying to argue her case, her client's case. But let's get back to the law and let's get back to the evidence. She said that you promised you wouldn't hold the fact that this man was a pimp against him. All right, I said that's fine if it doesn't become relevant. The court is going to instruct you on evidence of good character. Evidence of good character has been offered on behalf of this defendant. A person of good character may violate the law, but a person of good character is less likely to violate the law than one of bad character. If I find the defendant's character to be good, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, but you decide what the evidence was. Is there a reasonable doubt, ladies and gentlemen? Is there a <clears throat> reasonable doubt that this copper jacketing was fired by this gun. Does it rest easy in your mind? Of course it does. And it rests easy in her mind. She didn't answer the question. She said he wasn't even positive. This came out of the brain of that 26 year old young man. That's true. He didn't carry it into court, did he? He didn't carry it down to security. He didn't carry it himself. The doctor didn't carry it himself to the detective. But is there any reasonable doubt? Does it not rest easy in your mind, ladies and gentlemen? 
that this came from this. All right. It rests easy in your mind. It rests easy in her mind. She didn't challenge that. If we know that, ladies and gentlemen, what else do we know? How many other people has he shot that evening by the name of Danny? No, it rests easy in your mind. She talks about versions of this event. Mark Wilton. If Mark Wilton wanted to get up and lie to you, ladies and gentlemen, if he had wanted to make the state's case, it would have been the easiest thing back at the beginning to say, yeah, <clears throat> we went up there and said such may be considered for the purpose of strengthening his presumption of innocence. Now, there are a lot of other reasons why his being a pimp is relevant in this case. But let's just start with her proof. Did you look at these books? Escort service, dates, names. Why one of them even had, ladies and gentlemen, I hope some of you saw it. One of them even had the credit card, so you can use credit cards at the brothels. She chose not to testify against her husband. Against her husband, that's the operative word. That's the important word against ladies and gentlemen, and Ms. Schultz tells you, it's to keep the family together. You heard evidence that they were defending their home. Their home? This was a house of prostitution. This is where they carried on their acts. The raid had occurred several nights before. Wendy was concerned the police might come back and arrest them again if these guys were raising noise and someone called. Mr. Wilton should be married and have children at age 26. Well, that's nice. That's real nice. That's nice for her to decide that. <clears throat> it's nice for her to say these guys were out drinking, driving around, and looking for trouble. I didn't see it in the evidence. These things like they talked about, whores never close. We were spinning our tires. Yeah, we were doing this and then this man. And boy, I will never forget him. I remember how he looked. He looked like a madman. He came out. 
he went to his car and he got this big gun out. And I said, let's get out of here. And we started driving away and Danny turned around to look and boom, I heard the gun. The windshield fell out. The rear windshield fell out. Blood was all over Danny. It would have been the easiest thing in the world. It would have made our case. We wouldn't have needed to use his girlfriend, the prostitute, his wife, whatever she is. No, Mark told the truth. He told you what he remembered seeing. There was no other man. He didn't try to run over anyone. He was spinning his wheels, throwing gravel. They had said whores never close. And for that, ladies and gentlemen, for that, this man delivered the death penalty very fast, very quick. Now, in my opening statement, I didn't say this isn't the way it should be. This is the way it should be. It is her client. Her client is the law out at Wendy's in Hamilton County. He concealed evidence. He threw evidence away. He lied about it. He hid this witness out to keep the family together, she says. When did they get married? right around the 1st of January. When was this case set for trial? Shortly thereafter. First time was around January 7th, 8th or 9th. Boy, if you can't hide them, let's marry them. Marry them. Maybe they won't testify against me. He hid her out. He's telling the police where to find her and when she's found. Where is she? Where is this witness? In a trailer down in Georgia, 39 minutes away, 10 miles away, and he's paying to keep her out down there. Those people didn't know it. They didn't know she had jumped Bond. He was hiding her out down there. Then the old marriage ploy worked, and here he is moaning and groaning through his lawyer saying, Hey, it's not fair. It's not fair for them to use the evidence at the preliminary hearing. It's just not fair. Ladies and gentlemen, it is fair. That's the law and all this is evidence. Is there any reasonable doubt? Does it not rest easy in your mind, ladies and gentlemen? that there is malice. I'm not dropping the second degree. I don't remember saying that in my argument. All right, so we're going to stop there and get started with some q and I'm going to give you a word list. I'm going to read this at 60.
All right, so you are going to hear observing. Observe is O-E-B, so add the G there. Stabilized, physical, examination. I write that as initial X-A-G-S. Landslide, incipient, inspections. Um, I write that as S-P-E-B-G-S, -E and then come back for final Z for inspections. Uh, foundation is F-O-U-N-G-S. Uh, subsequent is S-K-W-E-N-T, squint. I think that's it for the word list. Landslide, I give you that. Inspected. Again, you can write that as S-P-E-K-T. Come back for final D. All right, here we go. I will read this at uh, 60, and it will be plaintiff questioning, just Q&A. Ready? Did you make any subsequent inspections of that home after this first occasion? Yes. What is your opinion? My opinion is that there is some incipient landslide beneath and adjacent to the home. And do you have an opinion based upon your examination and inspection of the home as to whether this is causing the foundation of the home to be damaged? Yes. And what is your opinion? It is causing the foundation to be damaged. In what respect is it damaging the foundation? It is causing the foundation to be pulled downward and outward with respect to the house. And have you inspected the plans of this home? Have you inspected the foundational plans? I have inspected the plans. Do you have an opinion as to whether the landslide has in the past caused physical damage to that portion of the home above the surface of the ground level? Yes. And what is your opinion? that it has caused damage to the portion above. Now, do you have an opinion as to whether this land movement or landslide has stabilized since the time of your first observing it to the time of your last observing it? Yes. And what is your opinion? It has not been stabilized. All right. We'll go ahead and Switch transcripts.
Now, the, the next Q&A that we do is going to have um, all four speakers. Uh, plaintiff is actually questioning, but it's going to start off with the court, okay? This one, um, I think I'm going to start this one at 80 and then work my way to 100, okay? And uh, plaintiff is questioning now, all right? Here we go. Nicole, have you ever testified in court before? No, I haven't. Okay, don't be nervous. Go ahead, counsel. How old are you at the present time? I am 22 years old. On September 28, 2008, the date of the accident, how old were you at that point in time? Almost 21 years old. My birthday is September 30. Please tell us what high school you attended. Eugene Central High School. Did you graduate? Yes, I did, with honors. What was your major in high school? Oh, I guess general education. I took a little bit of everything. After your graduation from high school, did you go on to college? Yes, I did. I moved to Salem, Oregon and attended the community college there. Was that against the wishes? of your parents? No, not really. They were very worried about me because I was moving so far away from them. What classes did you take at Salem Community? I enrolled in their business program. How were your grades? Oh, probably a B plus average. How long did you attend Salem Community College? About a year and a half. I really wanted to finish all my general ed so I could get a job. I see. Now, after attending college, did you relocate back in Eugene? Yes, I did. Were you able to find a job right away? Yes, I went to work for Pendleton, Maxwell, and Conrad. Attorneys at Law. Nicole, how soon after you returned to Eugene did you purchase your car, the 2008 Toyota? I was only home about three weeks when I landed a job. My dad offered to help me buy the car. He co-signed for me. Were you living at home at the time? No, I was living in an apartment with Cindy Gates by that time. Where did you meet Cindy? She worked at the law firm where I worked. 
she was one year behind me in high school. So I had known who she was for quite some time. Did Cindy have an automobile? No, she liked to work or liked to walk to work or ride her bike. We lived real close to the office. It was less than one half mile. Did you and Cindy become close friends? Somewhat. She was a very hard person to relate to. She liked to read and study a lot. She didn't care for sports and really wasn't into dating at that time. Although that changed when she met Ian. Was Cindy a student at that time? Yes, she was attending night school to become a lawyer. I kept telling her it would take her forever, but she was dead set on pursuing her career. How did you and Cindy meet Ian Harris? We met Ian one night when we were out dancing. He was really interested in Cindy. We finally agreed to go have coffee with him that same night. Did Cindy begin to date Ian after that first meeting? Yes, she did. Three and four times a week. Between studying and him, we never saw each other. Okay, when was the first time that Ian asked to borrow your car? I think it was on the 4th of July weekend. He said his car was in the shop being repaired. Did he continue to borrow your car after that? Yes, I guess he hated his car because it was always breaking down. So he borrowed mine almost every time they went out. Did he give you any money for gas and mileage? He would fill my tank up whenever it was empty. I hardly ever had to buy gas. On the date of the accident, had Ian asked your permission to use your car? Yes, he had. All right, I'm going to switch transcripts and uh, just going to date this. So I know that we already covered it in this class. All right, so this next q and I think I'm gonna read this at, I'll read this at 100, okay? All right. Again, this will be plaintiff, ready? Did the defendant have sexual intercourse with you? Yes, he did. Did he force you to have sexual intercourse? Yes, he did. What did the defendant do with the knife that was, that he had in his possession prior to that time? while he was having intercourse with you. He always had the knife in his hand. Now you had given birth to six children.
prior to that time? Yes. And you had engaged in sexual intercourse before? Yes. Did the experience that you and the defendant had, was it painful to you in any way? Yes. Did the defendant say anything to you after he started to have sexual intercourse? Yes, but I don't remember. How long would you estimate that the defendant had sexual intercourse with you? I don't remember. Can you estimate a short time, a long time, not too long. Your Honor, I have nothing further. Mr. Stockton, thank you. You said the defendant had sexual intercourse with you. After he was through doing this with you, what did he do? Then he put his pants back on and told me to get dressed and he took me back to my car. Now, did the act of sexual intercourse take place in his car? Yes. In which seat? In the front seat. In the passenger's seat? Yes, after the defendant took you back to your car, did you look at his license plate? Yes, did you later call the police? Yes, how much time lapsed or went by from the time you got out of the defendant's car and looked at his license plate until a police officer arrived at your house. About half an hour, no more than half an hour. And did you tell the police officer what the license number was of the man who had raped you? Yes. And then a short time after that, you were shown some photographs? Yes. And all of the photographs shown to you, did you select one of them as the man who had raped you? Yes. Was that this photograph here? Yes. Thank you. I have nothing further. Excuse me, I do have one more question. Okay, at any time in your entire life, had you ever met the defendant before this early a.m. hour of the 5th of April, 2012? No, ever seen him? or talked to him? No. Thank you. Nothing further. Examination counsel? Mrs. Rodriguez, how far away is the location on Oak Street where you say you had intercourse with Mr. Good to your home? about three blocks or four. Now, when Mr. Good first came along, were you with another individual? Yes. And who was that? My boyfriend. What's his name? Assuming that he has a name. Robert Carrillo. Is he around today? No. Do you know where he is? No, maybe in Arizona. Prior to that night, 
how long had Mr. Carrillo been your boyfriend? How long? Yes, for about 11 months. Now on this particular evening, approximately, during the course of the evening, how much, if anything, did you think you had to drink? About four beers, four beers. And where did you have those? I was at my cousin's house first, and then they came to my house, and then we went back to this place. What place is that? It's a bar. What city is it in? In Santa Ana. Do you know the name of it? It's called the Flamingo. Nothing further. Cross-examination. Thank you. Of the three places you mentioned, your house, your cousin's house, and the flamingo, at how many of those three did you have something to drink? Well, it must have been from 10 until two. You were at the flamingo from 10 to two? Uh-huh, or 11. We got there around 11. Well, while you were at the Flamingo, you were drinking beer. Is that what you're saying? Uh-huh. Okay, now, how about when you were home, before you left, or at your cousin's? Did you have anything to drink at your cousin's or just at the bar? Well, I had about two beers at my cousin's and maybe two at the Flamingo. Okay, did I understand you to say you think you had a couple of beers at the cousin's? I did, about two, then two at the other place. I see. And you were at the Flamingo from 10 or 11 until two? From 11 until around 15 to two. Was the Flamingo the only bar that you went to? Yes during the course of the time that you were at the Flamingo, you were with Robert Carrillo. Is that right? Yes. During the time that you were there, was there some problem with respect to Mr. Carrillo and another female? Objection, the question is irrelevant. I think it's relevant. Overruled. All right. And that concludes our live class. Have a great evening.